Good morning, everyone. I'm Joe Ballone, and I'm with my partner, Joseph Haynes. Uh, we're here on a nice Thursday morning in quarantine, ready to go over this 04 Chevy Blazers mass, abs ugh, mass absolute pressure sensor and then uh, mass airflow sensor. So first, we're going to start off with the MAP sensor, which is right here, located next to the EGR system, behind the throttle. Okay, looking at our MAP sensor again, you can see the connectors. So the orange is our low reference, so our ground. And the uh, light green wire, that's our MAP sensor signal. That's our signal wire. And the gray wire is going to be our 5 volt reference. We're here in the garage now, and I'm going to show you this chart for GM that shows the vacuum and voltage relation. So as vacuum increases, you can see that the voltage lowers from the signal. All right, to explain what these uh, readings mean, so when it says vacuums, vacuum at the top and it has a zero, that means that it is at either wide open throttle or engine off, key on. Um, so it either has, it has no vacuum and it just has pressure built up to it. At the bottom, you can see where it reads 22 vacuum. Um, that means that that's about idle, 20 to 22, and that's where the vo voltage is correlating with. So with absolutely no vacuum, we should read about 4.8 volts. With not maximum vacuum, but at idle vacuum, it should be anywhere from about 1.42 to 0.66 volts. Now that I have the vehicle idling, we're getting a vacuum reading about right on 20 Merc. That correlates with the voltage reading that we're getting from the green signal wire. That's around 1.5 or 1.4 volts. Now, when I put the throttle at wide open throttle, the voltage should raise up to 4.8 volts since the vacuum is lowering and the pressure in the manifold is increasing. Let's give it a try. It took me a couple times to get a good reading, but after that last video, you did see that it did drop, go up to about 4.5 to 4.6 volts, which correlates with the drop in vacuum and the increase in pressure. All right, talking about the uh, MAF sensor on this 2004 Chevy Blazer. This does have a heating element in this, so it is supplied by a 12 volt wire right here from the ignition system. That heats up the element on there. And then it has, right here, the yellow wire is going to be the five volt reference. And then going back to the ground wire. So that's how it gets its signal through that. So with this system, the heating element that's inside of here is set to 160 degrees by the 12 volt reference. So as that 12 volt is being supplied, the intake air is constantly cooling off that little uh, heated element inside of there. So as it's cooling it off, the supply is having to send more and more amperage towards it, and then the difference between how much amperage it's having to throw at it versus the uh, voltage supplied is going to give you what the intake air temperature is. So I went on to all data and I pulled the wiring schematic for the MAF sensor. Um, just to overview this and explain it a little bit. So on the right side, we have the powertrain control module. Um, and then on the left side, we have the mass airflow sensor. So with the mass airflow sensor, you can see from the very top left that it has a pink wire uh, that is supplying 12 volts to it. Uh, it has a black and white wire that is just grounding it out. And then it has a yellow wire from the PCM that is the PCM signal wire. So how this operates is that 12 volts is supplied to the power which heats up that heated element inside of the MAF sensor. That heated element um, basically tries to stay ahead of the air being inducted into the engine um, and that knows how much, the, how much mass is coming in based on the weight of the air or density of the air and the coolness of the air. Um, so if it is going over at a faster rate it's going to cool that coil down more and if it cools that coil down more that means it has to supply more amperage and that is where that MAF signal goes into play. 
so I'm out here and I went and got my trusty Pico scope. Um, I have it hooked up onto this MAF sensor at the yellow signal wire right there. That's where my lead's at. And then my ground lead is on the, just the black and white yellow ground. Uh, and with this, it should be able to give us the frequency um, of the signal that is being produced by the PCM. All right, so hopping in the rig now. I have my laptop sitting here on the driver seat and it has my pico log up so just i'm gonna hit play right now and you can see that right now it's not reading anything because the i have it in key off engine or key off engine off so the sensor isn't powered and it's not going to read anything it's not going to try to read anything from that supply voltage what we're going to be measuring for is frequency down here so right now it's reading frequency although the sensor isn't powered but you'll see like the frequency will change as after I start it. So let me start it. As you can see, it's dropping basically from, it goes up to about five volts, a little less than five volts, and then it goes down to zero. And that's the signal that it's sending. Right here, we can get our frequency measure, measures. So the value is right there. So right now we're reading about 2.6 kilohertz which is about 20,000 kilohertz. And then if I hit the throttle, this might be difficult to do. That value can increase. Here, let me zoom in on that. So there's the value right there. And it will increase. That just means that there's more grams of air, of dense air, flowing into the intake. Uh, I can't find any actual contents to say what each frequency corresponds to with the amount of grams, but all you have to know is that if there's a higher frequency, that means that more grams are coming into the intake. 